we were ready uh, to help more, to do more than we did um, back from April last year. Uh, we forced a decision by the Bundestag as uh, the Conservatives and Christian Democrats and um, we had uh, this decision to say, okay, let's do whatever um, it takes, uh, do, uh, bring heavy, heavy material there, tanks, uh, but um, uh, they were very um, skeptic and very, very slow. Um, you must see the Social Democratic Party is... Um, they, were, they used to be fighting against the uh, U.S. Army and all that in the 80s when a lo lot of them started their political career. And they have a deep pacific, uh, pacifist um, faction within their party. And uh, it's, of course, hard for them. And so they need it, need yeah. it, and need it. And, and, and the pity is that this costs life in Ukraine. But now we have the decision on the table. Um, 14 tanks are, for now are going into the Ukraine, which is 14 one. Plus two. 14 plus two. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The rescue tanks. Um, but is there more to come? Because it's just one battalion. Yeah. Um, there is, uh, first of, on, on, on first, first hand, we were informed that uh, they take care that partners, European partners, uh, deliver the other half or the other needed for the, for the whole battalion and then there was a decision uh, um, concerning the MS Abr uh, the M1 Abrams so um, of course it's a it's a first it's a first move and we have to look carefully what do we have uh, effectively to, to to offer exactly I mean it takes a long time yeah. to produce a tank so the industry says up to three years to come up with a tank so yeah, it's <laughs> This is not really not easy. It's, it's not just uh, getting somewhere and buying uh, out of the shelf. So um, they have to be produced, right? Uh, but of course, there are still um, uh, pieces of, of, of tanks uh, in, in industry and in other countries. So um, let's see what it, it, the, the main or the, the most important message is. is it, it starts now, and uh, the. Um, a Minister of Defence, uh, Pistorius, um, a new one after the old one um, was yeah. helplessly overstrained by her duty. Uh, the new one has uh, announced that by the end of March they will be there, which is very ambitious. Um, they have to be trained, of course, uh, and um, I hope um, they will keep their schedule. Um, let's let's talk about the training because the training starts here on German soil. Uh, what's the message with that to Russia? Are you concerned about a, a, an escalation of the war? Of course, we always are. We we, we don't want to to go easily into a third, third world war. Not, no one does. Uh, but on the other hand, we have to show uh, Putin that he cannot act uh, like he wants. He is. Well, he's, he has a, 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 a problem in mind, uh, feeling himself as um, the new Tsar or the new um, uh, reigner of uh, the former Soviet Union. He cannot uh, decide on the uh, topics, on uh, the um, situation in the surrounding countries. And this is also, a, I think it's a, it's a very um, important sign towards Xi Jinping when you look at the Taiwan Street. Um, those uh, crashers, those dictators, they have to know that it's price tagged, that it's really um, expensive when you just um, break international law and go in there. So you mean the, the, the sign that we are willing to uh, militarize again uh, is also like a message towards China that it's better not to start a war in that part of the world? Right. right. Um, there has been a lot of, well, illusion. Uh, we were uh, hoping that um, the everlasting um, peace uh, has broken out uh, after the uh, breakdown of the wall. But um, now we see you have to be pre prepared for war if you want to prevent war. It's an old saying of the Greek. Um, and uh, it's still uh, true. Mm. Um, you always have to pay for an army.